Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi Rabbil Alemin. Ve salatu ve selamu ala şerefil enbiyai ve mursalin Muhammedun Resulullah sallallahu aleyhi ve ala alihi ve sallallahu aleyhi ve sellem teslimen kathirin kathirin kathirin. Ve bagu. My brothers and sisters, we know the hadith of uh, from Ibn Majah. Say hadith from Ibn Majah, Kitab al-Fitan. Kala Resulullah sallallahu aleyhi ve sellem بدأ الإسلام غريبا وسيعود كما بدأ فتوبة للغربة أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام He said which means صلى الله عليه وسلم Islam began as something strange and it will return to being something strange and he said give the glad tidings of Tuba Fatuba lil Quraba. He said, Give the glad tidings of Tuba, and Tuba is the name of a tree in Jannah, uh, which means give glad tidings of Jannah to the strangers. Like most thinking Muslims of our time, over the last few years, <coughs> I have been thinking about the sad state that the Muslim Ummah finds itself in. Like lost sheep, we are large in number but distracted, disconnected, and dispersed. Pray to every passing wolf. All the power, authority, wealth, and influence seems to be in the hands of those who are arrayed against us, leaving us with little choice, if any, even with respect to the wealth which is apparently in our hands. It is they who dispose of it at will, even though on the face of it, we are its owners. Like most people, I also complained and defined our problem and redefined it and redefined it and discussed it and debated it and agonized over it until I came to the conclusion that none of this was getting me any closer to the solution. And frankly, that is all that matters. I read the Quran al Karim. Um, I read the Sirat of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi I wrote two books on the seerah of Rasulullah I read our own history, meaning the history of the Muslims, both ancient and modern, and from several different sources, because history uh, has the potential to teach us lessons. I spoke to people wiser and more learned than I am and listened carefully to what they had to say. Ulama and others in several countries. I prayed and asked for the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to understand our situation and devise a way out of it. And I thought about these times, as I thought about these times, I couldn't help but see many similarities between the situation today and the situation as it existed in the time of Rasulullah and his Sahaba during the major part of his life in Mecca. They too had almost no influence or power or wealth. They were the victims of all kinds of persecution and deprivation. They were evicted from their homes and boycotted and embargoed and tortured and some were even killed. Yet in one generation, in less than 20 years, the situation completely transformed. And Muhammad sallallahu and his followers became the leaders of Arabia and the known world. The big question is, of course, how did it happen? How did they do it? The answer is very simple. This happened simply by Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his followers, the Sahaba Rizwanullahi alayhi majmain, living Islam, not talking about Islam, not just learning about Islam, not writing about Islam, but living Islam, practicing. All that they did was to be Muslims, living, walking, talking, visible Muslims. They became living models of Islam, standard bearers of Islam, and that is the genesis of this term, standard bearer of Islam. They did not spend time in giving speeches about Islam or holding seminars and symposia about points of fiqh. They did not write momentous treatises on the hidden aspects of this ayah or that. They lived the Quran al Karim. They did not lecture others about the importance of sunnah. They practiced and followed the sunnah in every single aspect of their lives. They did not debate and create nomenclature 
to distinguish between what is haram and what is makro and in the makro what is tanzihi, what is tahrimi. They didn't get stuck in minor matters of religious observances and thereby create divisions. They simply did not do anything that was displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. They did not ask which sin was big and which was small. They avoided all sins because in their mind it was not the quantum or nature of the disobedience but who was being disobeyed that was important. And that is why when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used the word believers, he meant the Sahaba of Rasulullah sallallahu So there it was the answer to my question, what should we do to help ourselves? The solution was clear as daylight. Be Muslims as the Sahaba were Muslims. Become standard bearers of Islam. It's as simple as that. I realized that it was necessary for us to go back to the basics and see how Rasulullah sallallahu and his Sahaba practiced Islam and do the same with the hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would then change our condition when he saw that we were ready to do his work and to give it precedence over our own desires and pursuits. It is really quite simple. We are the ones who complicate it for ourselves and then we suffer. The Quran is quite clear on the fact that the decisions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that are made with respect to our lives in this world are related to our actions. Good begets good, evil begets evil. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Rum, ظَهَرَ الْفَسَادُ فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ بِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِ النَّاسِ لِيُزِيقَهُمْ بَعْدَ الَّذِي عَمِلُوا لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْجِعُونَ Allah said evil. Sins and disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all forms of evils and trials and tribulations and wars and suffering has appeared on the land and the sea because of what the hands of people have earned by their oppression, by their evil deeds. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may make them taste a part, a taste, just a taste, a part of what they have done, meaning a taste of the punishment in order that they may return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by repenting to him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that the solution lies within us, within our lives. In the Allah la yughayyiru ma bi qawmin hatta yughayyiru ma bi anfusihim. Allah said which means, verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not change the good condition of a people as long as they don't change their state of goodness themselves. Meaning that if we com commit sins and so on and so forth, then we invite punishment on ourselves. Otherwise, our good condition is not changed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala arbitrarily uh, into a state which is not good. And that is how the idea of becoming standard bearers of Islam was born. I believe therefore that the solution to our problems today globally and locally is to return to the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu and be as the Sahaba were, true to Islam, to the best of our ability. I agree we are weak and we ask for the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but we need to do our part. I want to begin with a quick quote from the great scholar and student of Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullahi alayhi Imam Ibn, uh, Imam Ibn al-Qayyim uh, al-Jawziyya rahmatullahi alayhi who says in his booklet and the name of the booklet is Al-Ghurbatu wa Al-Ghuraba strange, Strangeness and strangers. He defines the meaning of strangeness. He says, and I quote, many times in many situations, the people who follow the religion of Allah feel a sense of not belonging, of being out of place, of not fitting in, and in other words, of being strange. This feeling could occur in a gathering of non-Muslims, but unfortunately this feeling sometimes also occurs when one is with his fellow Muslims. A person sees his brothers and sisters doing acts which are contrary to Islam or taking part in innovations that sometimes even border on kufr, yet he feels that he does not have enough power or courage to stop them in these acts. Some brothers and sisters, especially if they do not have enough taqwa or Islamic knowledge, 
sometimes buckle under the pressure of their peers and join in these acts, knowing that this is not what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants them to do. However, feeling helpless, since it seems that they are alone in their ideas and without any support to help them do what is right, they succumb to such pressures. These brothers and sisters, may Allah have mercy on them, should take consolation in the ayat of the Quran and the many statements of Rasulullah describing this very situation of strangeness that they feel. Why have they been called strangers? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, فَلَوْلَا كَانَ مِنَ الْقُرُونِ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ أُلُوا بَقِيَّةٍ يَنْحَوْنَ عَنِ الْفَسَادِ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا مِمَّنْ أَنْجَيْنَا مِنْهُمْ وَاتَّبْعَ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا مَا أُتْرِفُوا فِيهِ وَكَانُوا مُجْرِمِينَ Allah said, if only there had been among the generations before you, people having wisdom, prohibiting others from al-fasad, from all forms of disbelief and crimes and sins uh, and polytheism in the earth, except a few of whom we saved from among them. Meaning only a few did this and they were saved. We saved from among them. Those who did wrong pursued the enjoyment of good things of this worldly life and they were the mujrimin. They were the criminals and the sinners. This ayah speaks of the few people on earth, the strangers who prohibit mankind from evil. These are the same people that Rasulullah mentioned when he said Islam began as something strange and it shall return to being to being something strange to give glad tidings. The Tuba of, of Tuba, which is a tree in Jannah, uh, meaning that he's giving the glad tidings of Jannah to the strangers. He was asked, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who are those strangers? He replied, those that correct the people when they become corrupt. And this is the hadith uh, which is in uh, reported by uh, Abu Amr al-Dani from the hadith of Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu. Who are the strangers? Those that correct the people when they become corrupt. Not just sit and watch and definitely not take part in that corruption. In another narration he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, those that correct my sunnah which has been corrupted by people after me. In another narration he said in response to the same question, they are a small group of people among a large evil population. Those who oppose them are more than those who follow them. And this is reported by Ibn Asakir. These praiseworthy people and may Allah include us among them are called strangers since they are a small minority among mankind. Thus Muslims are strangers among mankind. The true believers, the mu'mineen, are strangers among the Muslimin, among the Muslims. And the scholars, the ulama, are strangers among the mu'mineen. And the followers of the sunnah, those that clear themselves from all peoples of innovation, are likewise strangers. In reality, however, these strange, uh, their strangeness is only because they are the minority and it is not because their actions and beliefs are strange. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَإِن تُطِعْ أَكْثَرَ مَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ يُضِلُّوكَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ إِنْ يَتَّبِعُونَ إِلَّا الظَّنَّةِ وَإِنْ هُمْ إِلَّا يَخْرُصُونَ Allah said, and if you obey most of the people on the earth, they will mislead you far away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's path. They follow nothing but conjectures and they do nothing but lie. How true this is today. Especially social media is the uh, is, is the machine that has been invented by shaitan literally to propagate this. I agree it has usefulness, there is benefit in it, uh, like, there, there, like there is benefit in alcohol for example, uh, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibited it. So think about that, right? The benefit out, the, uh, the, the uh, evil outweighs the benefit. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, وَمَا أَكْثَرُ النَّاسِ وَلَوْ حَرَصْتَ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, which means that most of mankind will not believe even if you desire it eagerly. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَأَنِحْكُمْ بَيْنَهُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ وَلَا تَتَّبِعْ أَحْوَاءَهُمْ وَوَحْذَرْهُمْ أَنْ يَفْتِنُكَ عَنْ بَعْدِ مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ إِلَيْكَ فَإِنْ تَوَلَّوْا فَعَلَمْ أَنَّمَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ أَنْ يُصِيبَهُمْ بِبَعْدِ 
وإن كثيرا من الناس لا فاسقون. Allah said in Surah Al-Maidah, and so judge O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam between them by what ha- by what Allah has revealed and do not follow their vain desires but beware of them lest they turn you O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam far away from some of what Allah has sent down to you and if they turn away then know that Allah's will is to punish them for some of their sins and truly most people are fasiqun, they are rebellious and disobedient. Imagine, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is being uh, alerted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to say, these are people who are very uh, persuasive, right? Uh, they can turn you away. Imagine, obviously, with Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the question of turning away does not arise, but this is being revealed to him for us to say that don't be fooled by their uh, persuasiveness because that is the sweet talk is from shaitan Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said what about what about to Ibrahima wa Ishaq wa Yaquba ma kana lana an nushrika billahi min shay thalika min fadlillahi alayna wa ala nasi wa lakin akthar al nasi la yashkurun and Allah said that and Yusuf alayhi salam said and I have followed the religion of my fathers in surah Yusuf Ibrahim, Ishaq, and Yaqub, and never could we attribute any partners whatsoever to Allah. This is from the grace of Allah to us and to mankind, and most of mankind are ungrateful. Now you may say we are not idol worshippers, we are not ascribing partners, but to give precedence to our desires over the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is shirk. This is equal to ascribing partners to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this case, you have ascribed yourself as a partner because you have given precedence to your desire which contradicts uh, a, a hukum of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and therefore you have made yourself at the level of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is shirk and this is something which is uh, completely and totally haram and must be avoided. Therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the all-knowing creator, knows that most of mankind will not follow the truth. Instead, only a small group of people will be set apart and truly and that truly and correctly uh, who believe in it the strangers from among mankind may Allah make us among them those who are strangers are those to whom the truth of the worship of the creator is uh, the real stranger meaning the others for them the worship of uh, the creator uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is strange to them the beautiful character of Rasulullah is strange to them. The laws that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed are strange as also is the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us among the strangers who were given the glad tidings of Jannah by Rasulullah sallallahu and not the real strangers who do not see the truth. Finally, a lovely story from the seerah. Once when Umar al Khattab anhu was walking in the market, he passed by a man who was making dua. The man said, Oh Allah, make us of your few slaves. Make us of your few slaves. Um, Sayyidina Umar Radhalanu asked him, uh, Where did you get this dua from? So the man said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his book, he said, And few of my slaves are grateful. He said, oh, Very few of my slaves are grateful. Sayyidina Umar Radhalanu wept and admonished himself and he said the people are more knowledgeable than you O Omar O Allah make us of your few slaves he made this dua for himself also make us of your few slaves the people who are few sometimes when you advise somebody to leave a sin uh, they say they say they reply uh, but most people do it it's not only me but if you look for the words most people right aksa uh, in the Quran, most people, Aksar uh, al you will find that most people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, most people do not know. Walakin Aksar al Nasi, la alamu. Allah said, most people do not give thanks. Inna Allah ladu fadlin ala al Nasi, walakin Aksar al Nasi, la yashkuru. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, most people do not believe. Inna hul haqqu mir rabbika, walakin Aksar al Nasi, la yuminur. And if you look for most of them, you will find that most of them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, are defiantly disobedient. 
wa anna aktharakum fasiqun most of you are uh, defiantly fasiqun defiantly disobedient allah said most of them are in ignorant walakinna aktharahum yajhalun and the most of them turn away from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bal aktharuhum la ya'lamun al-haqq fa hum muridun and they turn around they don't see the they don't know the truth and they turn around allah said they don't they do not have reason wa aktharuhum la yaqilun they have no aql they have no they have no sense and allah said most of them don't listen bashira wa nadira fa arada aktharuhum fa hum la yasma'un allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said this about the many so we need to be among the few about the few allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said wa qalilun min ibadi ash-shukur that only a few of my slaves are grateful wa allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said wa ma amana ma'ahu illa qalil but nobody believed with him meaning the rasul except a few and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said fi jannatin na'im thullatun min al-awwalin wa qalilun min al-akhirin allah said in the gardens of pleasure jannat in the jannah a large company a large number of the former people meaning the early generations and a few of the later generations the bakhim al jazar rahmatullah alayhi uh, says go on the path of truth and do not feel lonely because there are few who take that path and beware of the path of falsehood and do not be deceived by the great number of people of the perishers of those who are losers this advice is particularly important and valuable today as we live in a world where the appearance of popularity is taken as a mark of greatness not scholarship or generosity or character or manners or courage or integrity or anything which is of real value but popularity on social media i advise myself and you to save ourselves from this voluntary slavery and focus on the only thing that has value which is the rida the pleasure of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala jalla jalaluhu wa sallallahu ala nabiyil karim wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in bi rahmatika ya rahman